Hey guys, this is Tashina from Logical Harmony. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a demo and a review of the Smashbox Studio Skin Foundation. This is a foundation I've talked about in a favorites video before. So many of you guys have asked to see it on camera. You wanna see how it applies, you wanna see how it wears with other products, and you wanted to hear a full-on review of this foundation. So that's what I'm doing today. So a little bit about the claims. So Smashbox is cruelty-free. They are owned by a parent company that tests on animals, but I do have a full video explaining how I feel about that. I'll link to that down below. And this foundation is also vegan. I have a list of all the Smashbox vegan products on logicalharmony.net. That will also be linked to down below so you guys can find that. So this is their Studio Skin 15 Hour Wear Hydrating Foundation. It comes in 21 shades, so definitely more than the average foundation, but I feel like they could expand the shade range a little bit more as well. In that range, they do have cool, neutral, and warm tones, so that's pretty impressive as well. A lot of companies don't do that, and it can make finding the right shade really, really difficult because sometimes the color, like the actual shade might be a match, but the tone of it is off from your skin. So I always appreciate when brands do that extra step and have the tone in there as well. So a little bit more about this foundation. It claims to be an oil-free hydrating liquid foundation that gives you flawless skin for 15 hours. It's tested to ensure that you look good in any light. And for extra sheer coverage, warm between your fingertips before applying, medium to full buildable coverage with a natural matte finish, blurs imperfections with light diffusing spheres, stays put for 15 hours, lightweight, comfortable feel, no touch-ups required, it's sweat resistant, and transfer proof and works for all skin types. Those are definitely a lot of claims that Smashbox has put out there. One thing I do want to point out, and I talked about this previously with this foundation, is that it is formulated to be worn on camera. So that is something that I find very unique about it. A lot of foundations and a lot of products, they look fine in person. And then as soon as you're on camera, sometimes they just look a little bit different. Um, sometimes they have flashbacks. Sometimes they emphasize certain features about your face that aren't necessarily something you see normally. So maybe it shows your texture a little bit more, little things like that. So having a foundation that's made to be worn on camera, I think is very unique. As someone who does YouTube for a living, I really appreciate it because I know I can put on this foundation and it's gonna look good. I think for a lot of you guys, that part about it will be beneficial as well. So I'm gonna get right into the demo because I've definitely talked enough. If you guys wanna see how this foundation applies and just some check-ins and then hear my final thoughts on it, just keep watching. I have already prepped my skin and to do that, first I use my Kipris Pot of Shade and then I use the Photo Finish Primer from Smashbox, which is really nice. I, this was like my holy grail primer years ago. I am just as much in love with it again now as I used to be. For the foundation, I'm going to be using shade 2.2, which is light golden beige. Oftentimes when you guys see me, I'm wearing shade 1.1. I wear this on camera so much of the time. This line is definitely formulated to be worn on camera. And so I think that's something that is worth noting. I think that's probably why it's so popular among the YouTube community. What I'm going to do is apply it to half my face using my Beauty Blender Pro. And then to the other half, using the blurring foundation brush from Smashbox. I'm gonna blend them out, see how they compare, see how they differ, and then I will finish up buffing out my face with one or the other, whichever I think looks best. So I'm gonna go ahead and dot this all over my face and then I'm gonna start blending. And I typically, for very full coverage, I use three pumps for my entire face, so that's what I'm going to start with today. I applied the foundation to this half of my face with the Beauty Blender and to this half with the foundation brush. So now I'm gonna look at it close up and see how they compare. I can see in my mirror that's a little bit farther away that the side with the Beauty Blender does have a little bit less coverage. I have like a little bug bite right here that I was scratching in my sleep and that I can definitely still see through the foundation. Overall, I think it looks good on the monitor. I can see that this side does have a little less coverage as well. Let's look at it close up and see what it looks like. Both sides look really nice. I will say that the side with the Beauty Blender definitely does have less coverage. The other difference that I'm seeing is that it's kind of settling in a little bit less on that side as well. So I feel like on this side, it does look very nice. It looks very smooth. The brush applied it very, very evenly. This is one of my favorite foundation brushes for that reason. It just applies everything so smoothly, so seamlessly, but it is settling in a little bit just on spots where my skin is a little bit more textured. It's not a deal breaker to me though. I think 
overall it looks better with the brush than with the beauty blender. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is apply just a little bit more on the areas that I need it and blend out my entire face using the brush. So I think I'm gonna do just one more pump and now I'm going to blend that out with the brush. And now that that is applied, I'm gonna go ahead and look at it again in the mirror just to make sure both sides are even. It definitely did help a lot with the coverage. And again, it just looks really nice. One thing I really like about this foundation brush is it's great for stippling on to help build up coverage. And then since it is a little bit fluffy, you can kind of buff things in. And I've noticed that with a lot of foundation brushes, when you buff, they tend to leave streaks in the foundation. And for me, that is like, that is a huge issue that I have with so many foundation brushes. Whereas this one, it seriously looks like you are just buffing it with nothing. Like it could be a beauty blender. That's how seamless it is. I am going to go over a couple of the spots where I do have a little bit of texture with my beauty blender to see if that smooths it out. That totally did the trick, just a little bit of buffing with this. I think there was just a little extra product sitting on those areas that the brush was not able to quite fully blend out, but the Beauty Blender took care of that. And again, those areas weren't a big deal. It's just something I personally noticed looking up close in the monitor, in my mirror, I don't see it at all. It's just in my close-up mirror, so it's personal preference. And I do feel like it really covered up the redness that I had on my cheeks, which is really nice. I like that this foundation comes in some different tones. It does come in different shades, but I feel like the coverage is really good and on camera, it just, it always looks so nice. I'm gonna go ahead and conceal and I'm going to be using the Studio Skin 24 Hour Waterproof Concealer in Light Warm. I've tested this, it is waterproof just in case you're wondering, because I was wondering, so I had to find out. And for this, I am going to blend with my Beauty Blender. I've used this foundation brush on concealer and it works really nicely, but I just like the finish a little bit more with the Beauty Blender. And then to highlight some areas of my face, I'm going to use that same concealer, but in the shade Light. And for that, I'm also going to use my Beauty Blender to blend it out. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and look at that close up just to see how it blended together. On camera, it looks really, really nice, so I'm just curious. It just blends so seamlessly with this foundation. They're definitely, oh, I have a cat hair on my chin. They were definitely made to be worn together. They're totally made for each other. They blend so seamlessly. It's kind of unbelievable. I've like never had a foundation and concealer that blend so evenly together. What I'm going to do now is set my face and I'm going to be using the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder in the shade Translucent Light. And this is a foundation that I think if you have really dry skin, you can leave it be and let it set on its own. Since it is a moisturizing foundation, a lot of people do want to set this. I like to just very, very lightly set my face. So I just like to do a little tap. Shake it off. And that's probably what I'll use for my entire face, just a very light dusting. I'm gonna add just a little bit more right under the eyes. Okay, now I'm going to take a look at the powder close up just to see how it's looking. On camera, it still looks super duper flawless. It's just so looking really, really smooth. It looks really even. It's not caking up anywhere. It's not laying funky on the foundation. I've used this foundation with several setting powders. And I've never had any sort of issue with it. Comment, let me know what your favorite setting powder to use with it is. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of my makeup off camera, and then I'll be back for another check-in so you guys can see how it's looking. And then I'm gonna share a lot of my thoughts on this foundation. So I finished up my makeup. Everything I'm wearing will be listed down below. I wanted to go ahead and do a check-in with you guys and then share my thoughts on this foundation. I've been using it for a few months, so I feel like it's definitely time for a review. On the monitor and in my mirror, it looks so smooth, so even. It's not clinging to anything. It's not settling in anywhere. It just looks very blended and everything, like all my other makeup just blends so well into it. It's like it, I don't want to say it like absorbs your other products because that implies that it takes the pigment away, but it just like melds with them so perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and look close up and let you guys know if I see anything. So I'm looking right now at the magnified side and it's looking good. There's still a couple spots where I have a little bit of texture and obviously you can see that. And it being full coverage foundation, there are a couple spots where it just does, you know, that's just gonna happen no matter the formula. So as far as living up to its claims, I do feel like this foundation does live up to its claims. I think it does have that nice coverage that is very buildable. I think it does have a nice natural matte finish. It's definitely not too dewy or too glowy, but it does have like a very nice skin-like feel about it. It's not too matte either. I think it definitely helps to mimic whatever your skin has going on. It just looks really, 
it looks a little bit radiant and I think that that's really nice if you wanted to amp that up. Pairing this with the Smashbox Radiance Primer, very, very pretty if you like glowy skin. I think it does help to blur imperfections as well, especially if you pair it with a blurring primer. That works amazing, but even on its own, it's very nice. I wore this with the Super Goop Primer, which is a blurring primer, and my skin looked airbrushed. It was crazy. So that is a, definitely a primer I would suggest wearing with this, um, especially if you pair the Eau Naturelle Pore Perfecting Finishing Powder over it. I'll link to that below. That combination of those three, oh my gosh, like I took some selfies and it looked like I had straight up like blurred my skin, but I didn't at all. I did not touch it. So as far as if there are no touch-ups required, I think that that's true as well. Um, depending on your skin type, you might want to, you know, pat at it throughout the day. I like to, if I'm gonna be on camera again after wearing this for a while, I like to spray the Photo Finish Primer Water on my face and then just pat over it with a beauty blender. So if you need a good way to quickly refresh the foundation, that seems to be the best way that I found to do it. I don't think you need it, but if there are times where you just wanna make sure you continue to look your best and the foundation looks fresh throughout the day, that's definitely a great way to do it. I do think it's sweat resistant. I do also think that it's transfer proof. I wouldn't say that I've ever like tried to rub it off, but it definitely stays put. I haven't noticed this ever on like my shirts or anything like that. So I would say yes, it is transfer proof, especially if you set it. If you don't set it, I don't think it is quite as much. So overall, I do think that this lives up to its claims. I just think it's an amazing foundation. It is one of my all time favorite foundations, which I didn't know when I first got it. I didn't realize I'd be saying that, but I've been using it now for like three months and I cannot get over this foundation. It's so good. I just, it's so good. So if you haven't tried it yet, I think you need to. <laughs> It's just, it's such a nice foundation, especially if you're on camera. It does kind of start to fade a little bit on my skin, but as it does, it does it so gradually and so naturally. It doesn't get patchy, it doesn't get flaky, it doesn't get dry and clumpy. It just will be like spots where I tend to have a little problems with coverage, like here on my nose. It will kind of start to wear thin, but it does it in such a natural looking way that it's not obvious that it's wearing off there. Like I can see that and I know that that's the case, but I don't think anyone else can tell. And it's not like, you know, sometimes when you wear a foundation and it's wearing off, you have like lines, like it's very obvious that there was product there and now there's not. That's not the case with this. It is definitely very moisturizing and hydrating. My skin always feels so nice throughout the day. It doesn't feel dry. It doesn't break me out. It doesn't irritate my skin. It doesn't oxidize. I just, I've been trying to come up with anything bad to say about this foundation and I honestly can't. It's just really, really nice. I think again, if you want a more natural coverage and a natural finish, I would apply it with the Beauty Blender. That doesn't apply quite as much product or apply a little bit less and blend it out. So if you do want a lighter coverage, it's definitely possible with this foundation and it's still gonna give you that really great look on camera. It just, again, like I cannot emphasize how much this makes your skin look incredible on camera. I have been on camera after wearing this for like eight hours and I kid you not, you guys would not know the difference about if my makeup was freshly done or not. Um, um, it just looks so nice throughout the day. It wears so well. I have not found any primers or powders or other products that don't play well with this foundation. I have nothing bad to say, nothing. So Smashbox, thank you. You knocked this one out of the park. I love it. If you've used it, comment, let me know. I'll see you guys next time.